Hi, welcome to More Monday. I'm so excited to be here with you again tonight. This is one of the highlights of my week to get to come and to study God's word together. It keeps me on my toes. I was thinking about this program in general, this broadcast, and it's not perfect. I said that at the very beginning, many, many months ago, that this is not a perfect broadcast. It's not professionally done. I'm sitting in a box here by myself, throw up a picture every week, but I share sincerely from my heart the things that I'm learning, the things that I feel like God's showing me that's helping me experience the more in life that he died to give us. My name is Christy Overton Johnson, and if you haven't joined me before, I just want to welcome you. The whole goal of tonight is to experience the abundant life that Jesus Christ died to give us. It says in John 10:10 10, 10, that Jesus came to give us freedom, to give us an abundant life. He came to save us, but it says that we have a real enemy that seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And so often as Christians, as believers, we go through life and we're robbed of the very things that God died to give us, that he came to this earth in the form of man. He laid his body down, took the nails in his hands, in his feet, and took a, a piercing in his side and died a brutal death so that we could be saved for all of eternity, but also to live an abundant life, a life of more here on earth. So every time that we meet, it's about discovering that more. And so we've done a lot of different series. We've, we've done a lose the weight series about cutting off all the things that slow you down and trip you up and sin that keeps like stopping you in your tracks. Because I don't know about you, but I want to move forward in life. I don't want to keep getting stumbled and tripped up over the same old thing time after time again. But that is what we often do. And it's nothing new. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. And we can see from the beginning of time that the things that trip us up are the things that have tripped people up since the beginning of time. And so we've talked about eliminating those things out of our life. In this series, we're doing an awareness series. We're becoming aware of three things that I believe that if we live in a state of awareness of these three things, that we will have more victory. We will experience what Ephesians 3.20 says, the abundance of God, that he is able to do abundantly, infinitely more than we can ever hope for or imagine, even now on this earth. And so the three things that I wanted to talk about, and we've started talking about the one, the first one, is who God is, living in a state of awareness of who God is. Second, we're going to study in the coming weeks who we are as children of the King. And we're going to live in a state of awareness of knowing who we are, the authority that we have, the, the limitations that we have in our flesh, but the supernatural power that we have because of God's power that lives in us. And then we're going to do a, have an awareness series on the enemy. And, you know, we might add one more. I don't know. But right now it's going to be three. That's what I sense that we're to talk about. I was planning tonight to go ahead and, and talk about an awareness on ourselves, but I felt like I was supposed to bring up another aspect of being aware of God. Last week, we talked about being aware of God as the good shepherd. We used Psalms 23, and we went through all the aspects of that verse, taking it from the perspective of who a good shepherd is, what the good shepherd's role was in biblical, in biblical days. And as we are aware that Jesus that God came in the form of man, Jesus, and lived here on this earth, that we become aware that God is our good shepherd, that he's leading us, he's guiding us, he's protecting us, he is beating off the enemy with his staff, he is rescuing us, he's binding up our wounds and ministering healing healing and hope to us. Those He's providing, he's, he's making sure we have everything that we need and so, and he's leading us and he's guiding us and he's standing behind us and protecting us. And so when you are aware of that, we talked about how you can go through the valley of the shadow of death. You can face difficult times where there's famine and different things like that and, and, and 
like COVID-19, you can face those days because you're aware that the good shepherd, the one who's laid his life down for you, is not going to let anything happen to you. Well, that is wonderful. And that has helped me so much in my life. And that's what I like to do on these shows, is these broadcasts, is tell you what's helped me. Because I'm here to tell you, it's been a long road. And I have made so many mistakes. But for me, it's, and I think this is what God says. He says, fight the good fight of faith. That it's not about perfection, but it is about coming to God, seeking him, letting him show you things in your life that need to be tweaked, not in a condemning way, but in a convicting way so that we can learn, so that we can experience the more. And so tonight, what I wanted to talk about was being aware of, yes, we know God is the good shepherd, but being aware of who he is, he's God. Does that make sense? I don't know how else to say it. We know he's a good shepherd. We know he's good. We know he's loving. But I have found in my own life, and and especially in a lot of contemporary churches, which I attend one, so I'm not, I've I've attended one for years, but we can become so grace-focused that we forget that God is God. God is a holy God. It says in Isaiah, Isaiah says, holy, holy, holy. I was looking at those words today, and um, that is in Isaiah 6, 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And those three words, holy, 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 means he's really, really, really holy. He is so holy. He's so holy that we can't even be in his presence. It says It talks all in the Old Testament how, I mean, we could be in his presence, but if we were in all of his presence, it'd be too much for us in in our earthly state. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is everywhere. And sometimes we can go through life and we forget that he is holy and that we should fear him. If we were aware, (coughs) excuse me, if we were aware of who God is, that he's the good shepherd, it would change how we face things. If we could Become aware that God is holy, that he is a living God who wants a relationship with us, that he has the power to speak a word and change everything. He sustains us. He gives us air to breathe. I mean, we do not exist outside of him, yet we live our lives thinking, I got it. I can do this in my own strength. You know, I, I don't need God. Maybe we profess to know God, but we live in a way that denies him. And so many of us, I've done that. I went to church for decades where I went and I really was afraid of God. I didn't have a reverential fear of God. I had a terrifying fear of God, if you know what I mean. I was afraid to trust him. I was, I didn't know he was the good shepherd. I was afraid to give my life fully to him because I didn't know what he would do with it. That's not the kind of fearing God the Bible talks about. The Bible wants us to have a holy awe of God. Like we have a reverential fear of God. And think about as a little girl, I was never a afraid of my mother and father because they were loving and they are loving parents. But I did have a sense of fear and that I didn't want to disappoint them. I didn't want to disobey them, especially in those younger years. And I I just wanted to please them. That's how we're to live with God is to be like, we trust God because we know who he is. We know he's the good shepherd, but we also know that he holds everything in his hands. And we live in a state of awareness that he's holy, that we need him, that he's good, but he's also just. And we can't go through life thinking a lot of times you hear this. Well, I'm already saved. God's already forgiven me of my sin. So I can just go do whatever I want to. That's not true. Because if you truly love God, the Bible says, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so I want to encourage you tonight to develop an awareness of who God is, 
Now you might be looking at this picture behind me and thinking, what is that all about? Every week I try to find a picture that talks about, that reflects what we're talking about. Well, this picture I took at the beach. It's a picture of down here. We got some chairs where sometimes we'll sit and we'll watch the beach. You'll notice that there's some billowing clouds there. And I love it because I just noticed, I don't know if you can see, but there's actually birds, seagulls flying in formation right under the clouds. And if you were to step out on the other side of that fence, you would see that there's beach and then the water goes right up to a point on that beach. Why is that? It's because God tells that water that it cannot go past a certain point. It is because God has put that sand there. And God knows how many grains of sand are on that beach and in this world. See those birds? God knows how many birds. It says in the Gospels and Matthews that not one bird falls from the sky. Not one bird in this whole universe does God not know about. Talks about God knows. Like if I was standing on that beach, my hair would be flying everywhere. God knows the amount of hair on my head and your head. Now, some of you, it might be easy for God to know how many hairs you got on your head. But he knows the difficult things too. And I just want to read this verse. I love this. I, I walk the beach. I walk that beach on the weekends when I get the opportunity to go. And I marvel at the fact that when that wave comes up, it goes right back. Why? Because God says it has to. So listen to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 5, verse 22. And this is... Um, says here, listen, you foolish and senseless people with eyes that do not see and ears that do not hear. God forbid that we are ever those people. And he's talking to the Israelites. He's talking to people who had seen God do miraculous things. They had seen his power, but they were going through life blind. They were going through life forgetting who God was, that he was Yahweh that he was God Almighty, he was the great I am, and they had lost their fear for him. And he says here, listen, you foolish and senseless people, have you no respect for me? Do you not fear me? Why don't you tremble in my presence? I mean, God doesn't want us afraid of him because he says, come to me, all, you, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, approach the throne of grace with confidence. He doesn't want us cowering. You know, I think about like a, a dog that comes to its master or maybe a new master. Or maybe this dog's been abused and he tucks his tail. And we've had a dog, our dog Ellie, when we first got her, if Tim even walked up, she would wet the floor. I mean, that's how scared she was. That's not what God, want. God I, I don't want to say God doesn't want us wetting the floor. That's not what he wants. He doesn't want us in fear like that, but he wants us to realize who he is. And we become so aware of it that we say, God, I'm going to live my life for you because of who you are. I was just thinking of that song, because of who you are, I'll give you glory. Because of who you are, I'll give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, God, I worship you because of who you are. Thank God he gave me the lyrics because I haven't sung that song in a long time. But it's because we realize who he is, it changes how we live. So he says, have you no respect for me? Why don't you tremble in my presence? I, the Lord, this is where we're getting to this picture, define the ocean sandy shoreline as an everlasting boundary that the waters cannot cross. Now, obviously, there's times where God must lift his hand. We see, type, we see things that happen in this world, in the natural. But I'm just telling you what the word of God says. The waves may toss and war, roar, but they can never pass the boundary that I set. 
And then he just, he's like, but why haven't you revered my name? Why haven't you given me the respect? He says, but my people have stubborn and rebellious hearts and they've turned away from me. They forgot. They, they forget to remember who he is, the great I am. And that he's holy, 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 really holy. We need to be, that says they do not say from their heart, and this is what we should say. Let us live in awe of the Lord our God, for he gives us rain each spring and fall. He gives us the assurance of a harvest when the time is right. It says your wickedness has deprived you of these wonderful blessings. What was their wickedness? It was forgetting God. It was going through life without that remembrance and that awareness of who he is. You know, so often we sing that song, a wonderful hymn, How Great Thou Art. And I want us to sing it at the end. Hopefully I won't forget. But we go through, if you've grown up in church like I did, have sang that song hundreds of times. But they're just words so often. And that's what happens a lot in the Bible is God's people get in a routine and they forget who they're going to worship. We sit on Sunday mornings and we go to church because we know we're supposed to. But are we really going to worship God? Are we going to worship the one who has given us breath, that gives us life? the very one that has put the stars in the sky, told them where to go, has named them, the Bible says, the one that keeps the ocean from coming too far upon the sand and taking us all out. I think of that every time I go to bed, that if God lifted his hand, I would drown. If God lifted his hand, I'd have no oxygen. Our whole universe the way the earth spins, the tides, the seasons, where we sit in relation to the sun, if it budged just a little, we would die. But yet we have a God, a holy, holy, holy God who sees us, who knows us, who loves us, and who has a plan for us. And so as we go through life and we become aware of that, we become aware of who he is. We begin to live differently. And that's what last week was about, living differently, not living in fear of our enemies, not living in fear of lack, not looking at our circumstances because we know we have a good shepherd. This week is about going through life differently, going through life with the respect for God. And when we realize who God is, it causes us to want to live differently. We see that God, because of who you are, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. And I am going to lay down my life. Do you know what worship means? I looked those words up today. Worship means to lay yourself prostrate before God, to bow yourself before him. So it's not about a song. We go to church and we sing praise and worship music. That's just the name for it. What we're doing is we're we're worshiping God with music. We're humbling our hearts. Listen, if you go to a church and you cannot stand this music, listen to the words. Shut your. Here's what I've had to do in many a churches, <laughs> and I'm fortunate to be in churches now where there's some great music. But I've been in some where I've literally had to close my eyes. Please, I don't know how this is going to come out. But I've had to close my eyes and just listen to the words. Because maybe the person's movements, maybe they were just annoying my flesh. Does that sound terrible? But I know you know what I'm talking about. I know you sat in a church where you're looking at somebody and you're like, they're all my nerves, the way they, and I'm probably on your nerves right now, the way I'm doing something. Or we don't like their voice. Or maybe they're just playing can't sing. Or maybe they're hitting the drums the wrong way. And It distracts us. Well, that's not why we're there. We are there because we are there to worship the one who gave his life for us, the one who sets the world in motion, the one who spoke a word, and here we are, breathed life into us, fashioned and formed us with his hands. We're going, our response to that should be that we live in a daily state of prayer, a daily state of praise, and a daily state of worship. 
We can go to the grocery store and be worshiping God. God, I thank you for this food. I thank you so much for the beautiful clouds in the sky. Thank you for this rain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God, for who you are. You know, a fun game for me is sometimes when I'm walking, I'll go through the alphabet and I'll say, and I'll think about the attributes of God. Maybe you don't know how to praise God or to give him glory. Start thinking about who he is. I'll start with A. God, you are the alpha and the omega. Okay, that's an A and an O, but when I get to O, I'll say omega, but you're the alpha. You are almighty. You are awesome. I get to be. You're the best. I am your beloved. You are beautiful. C, God, you are Christ. You came and you lived here. You are cool. You are, we've done this as a team before with our Victorious Living team. It's a fun game. Somewhat until you get X, then, then you are, some, you know what I always say, God, you've got X-ray vision. <laughs> you can see everything. Think of ways to, to worship him. Think of ways to just acknowledge his attributes. You could do that riding down the road. As you think about and bring your mind back to who he is, it'll make you live in a state of reverential fear and awe. You'll give respect to God, the respect that is due his name. It says in Hebrews that it is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. The only time you see God getting angry is when people forget him. They live life in their own strength, forgetting that the very breath that we breathe is given us by Almighty God. We go through life in our own strength, not once bringing him into our day, not once asking him. We get up and say, good morning, God. Thank you for keeping me safe. We go to bed. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord I sold to keep. We, we get ready to pray. Thank you, Lord, for this food. But then in between, so often we can go through the whole day and except for those brief little routine prayers, we don't even acknowledge him. The Bible says, acknowledge me and what I will direct your path. Acknowledge me and you will live in my presence. I don't know. I, 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 I'm hoping this made sense. I've, I'm just kind of, let me check my time here. I'm just kind of sharing what is on my heart. There are three things. If you've grown up in the church, that you learned about God. And I'm going to tell you from the bottom of my heart, the truth. I will always do that. But here's the truth about that. When I learned that God was omnipotent, omni means all, in all encompassing, everywhere. So he's omnipotent, which means he's all powerful. He's omniscient, which means he's all knowing. And he's omnipresent, which means he's everywhere. And I think there's some others, but those are the three I wanted to focus on tonight. Well, when I thought about God being all powerful and all knowing and everywhere, it scared the mess out of me. First of all, I didn't realize what a loving, kind, merciful father he was. I was only focused on his judgment. So I was sure that God was watching from heaven. Well, not just from heaven. He was everywhere. He was seeing everything. He knew my thoughts, the Bible says, before I even had one. And it scared the daylights out of me because I just thought for sure that I was going to mess up and he would see it. But I didn't realize that God already knew I was going to mess up. That while I was still a sinner, Jesus Christ came and died for me. Not when I got all cleaned up, but when I was a sinner. So I really, I have no reason to fear, fear God, be afraid of him. But I have every reason to be in awe of him. All in the very fact that he would save me. That he would die and give his life for me before I had done one good thing. That is just amazing. So, like I said, those things scared me. They, they kept me from really fully opening up my heart and my mind to God because I was afraid of his power, how it would change my life. I was afraid of him being everywhere and where he might take me and what he might know about me. And, but then once I got to know him for who he really was, not an angry God, but a loving God who gave his best for us. And it says that if God 
gave up his son for us, will he not give us everything else we need? When I realized the sacrifice that he had made for me, that he was the good shepherd, then I got excited thinking about God's all powerful and I am a child of God and his power has now deposited in me. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave is in me. He's all powerful. He has power to do anything. Nothing is impossible with impossible for God. With man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. Hope I said that right. There's a lot of possibles in there. But now I get excited to think that God is all powerful. I am his child and his power through the Holy Spirit lives in me. I get excited to think God is everywhere. When I go into a prison and I am speaking about Jesus Christ and sharing his love, I know God goes in with me. And when I leave, guess what? God is staying with those men and women that are incarcerated that God loves. And when I'm in there, God is with my kids. God is with my parents. God is with my husband. God is with my children who are in different parts of the state, my child. And so I can be at peace knowing that the all-powerful God is everywhere. And he knows everything. He knows what gets me excited. He knows what I'm afraid of. He knows who to put in my life that will help me grow and be strengthened. He knows it all. And what hit me today, and this may sound crazy, but it hit me for the first time that those three things are going on together all the time. It's not just God is everywhere, and then God knows everything. This might just sound so elementary, but it was like something went off in my spirit today, and I wrote this. I put, it's all three working together at all times. That omni, all-encompassing knowledge, power, and his presence is always working. So wherever he is, which is everywhere, he knows everything and sees it all. And he has power over every situation everywhere right now, knows everything. I could get tongue tied. It just excited me because no matter where I am, Psalms 139, take the time to read that. We don't have time tonight. The Bible says, if, if I go to the depths of the earth, you are there. If I go to the highest heights of the heavens, you are there. There's nowhere between the highest heights and the lowest depths in this world that we can go that God does not see us. You can be an astronaut on the moon. You can be an inmate in solitary confinement. You can be a soldier somewhere off in Afghanistan or, or North Korea or wherever. You can be wherever you are. You can be a mom with your children trying to homeschool them during COVID and God sees you and God is there with you and God has the power and he's going to put that power in you to help you teach your children. See how that applies everywhere. And so he is the good shepherd. You need to know that, but he's also Yahweh, the great I am. And let me close with this. Romans 8. I love Romans 8. I think it's my favorite passage. So I say this is my favorite every week, but I think I do, but it really is. And, um, you know, it talks about God giving us life, giving life to our mortal bodies. I don't know if you need life, but I need it. And so let me, let me get going here. What can we say about the wonderful things about God? This is all the things that um, has just been shared. Oh, where are we? Romans. I, I want to make sure. Paul, I thought it was Paul, but I wanted to double check. Paul is writing this and he talks about all these wonderful things about Jesus Christ. And then he says, what can we say about all of this? All these things that he's already talked about in Romans 8. He says, if God is for us, who can be against us? If the all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere God is for you, who can be against you. What judge, what court case, what what enemy, what foe, what COVID pandemic, what cancer diagnosis, what financial situation, what political party, what president. 
I don't know where you sit on all that. It's not the point. The point is God has a power. He's all knowing and he's everywhere. He's in the White House. He's in, in the Senate. He's in everywhere. So if God is for us, his people, who can be against us? Nobody. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave up Jesus for all of us, won't he give us everything else? This is the verse I was talking about earlier. This is Romans 8, 32. Verse 33 says, who dare accuses us from whom God has chosen for his own? Think about that. Almighty God, who's everywhere, all powerful, all knowing, has chosen you, laid his life down for you. Before you even acknowledged him, before you did one good thing, before you asked for forgiveness, when you were dead in your sins, he died for you. That's good news. That's the gospel. So who dares accuse you? God has chosen you as his own. Nobody. For God himself has given us the right to stand with himself. And so that's what we're going to be talking about next week. I think, unless God changes it, <laughs> is the right standing we have with God. That's who we are. And when you start to wrap your brain around that one, everything changes. Who then can condemn us? Nobody. For Christ Jesus died for us, raised us, and he was raised to life for us, me and you. And he is sitting in the place of God, place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Jesus Christ is pleading for you today. The good shepherd is next to almighty God praying for you. And he knows what to pray for because he's everywhere. He's all knowing and he's all powerful. Can anything ever separate us from God's love? Nope. Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? No. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we're persecuted or hungry or destitute or let me add this, sitting in prison or going through a pandemic? No. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we're in danger or threatened with death? No. Nothing can change the love of God. Nothing. It, it's been sealed. It was sealed the day that he died for us, the day that he rose and conquered death, the day that he deposited his Holy Spirit. That is the seal of God on our lives. Despite, no, despite all these things, despite what? Despite the hardship, the death, the famines, the pandemics, the prison sentences, all these things, despite all these things, an overwhelming victory is yours through Christ who loves us. And I am convinced, this is Paul, a man who was persecuted, a man who knows what it was like to be hungry, a man who was once a murderer of Christians, but God chose him because God knew there was something in Paul and God gave him a ministry and he's still ministering us today. It's amazing. Nothing, Paul says, can separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I hope this has helped you tonight. I hope that you will take the time this week to just look at the heavens. The heavens declare his glory. The heavens declare. The Bible says in Romans 1.20, I think it is, or Romans 1.21, in that area, it says that man is without excuse, that we can look at the sky, we can look at the universe, we can look at the sun, we can look at our bodies, how complex and beautifully and fearfully, wonderfully made that we are. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and we can know that there's a God. And what you might not know is there's a God who loves you. Become aware of that, and it'll change everything. I want us to close tonight singing that hymn, if I can, <laughs> How Great Thou Art. Sorry. I think I live with a constant sore throat, but 
might be I just talk too much <laughs> according to my husband and kids. So anyway, Tim always teases me. He says I have my 10,000 words in by about eight o'clock in the morning. But anyway, this is How Great Thou Art. It's a, a hymn, and I'm hoping that I don't butcher any of the words, but sing it with me if you know it. And tomorrow, sing it in your car. Sing it in the shower. Sing it when you're headed to the grocery store or wherever you have to go tomorrow. Sing it if you're on a prison compound on the yard or solitary confinement. And whenever, wherever you are, God is there. He sees you. He loves you. And he is great. So here it is. Oh, Lord, our God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. See the stars? <laughs> I hear the roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come. With shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Father, we thank you that you're so great. We thank you that your love for us is great. It's so deep. It's so wide. Help us to understand, as all God's people should, just how much you love us, just how good you are. Help us to understand that you are all-powerful, you are all-knowing, and you are everywhere, and that is for our benefit. Help us to remember that you're the good shepherd. Help us to live, God, with eyes wide open, ears wide open, in humble adoration of you. May our heart's affection and our mind's attention be set on you every single day of our life, in the good times and the bad. And as Paul says, Lord, may we find the secret of life, of living in much and in little, and the secret is in you. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, God, that we can face every situation because you are in us and you will give us the strength. That power that created the world, that raised Jesus from the dead, lives inside of us. Help us to live in a daily awareness of how great of a God you are and how great of a power that is in us. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you guys, and I want to thank you for joining. Thank you, Pat Avery, for moderating tonight. He answers all the comments for me and puts things there that you can connect with us. If you haven't done so, I meant to tell you this at the beginning. Pat asked me to do this every time, but if you are following us on, on Facebook, please like the page. Please share the page. You can help more people experience the more of Christ. Also, please tell people about our ministry, Victorious Living Prison Outreach. You can go to victoriouslivingmagazine.org, no, victoriouslivingmagazine.com or vlmag.org, and you can learn about our outreach to inmates. We have a publication that is bilingual. It is an amazing testimony of the faithfulness and the goodness of God. It's helping people become free in Christ. It's connecting people with valuable resources. And we have a correspondence outreach. 
and we're just excited about being a part of people's lives and their transformation. And you can help us deliver hope today. You can help people experience more in life throughout the United States in the prison system. Just go to our website and just know that any dollar that you donate to our ministry, every dollar sends in a magazine, touches multiple lives for multiple years. And so we, I wish somebody, maybe next time I'm going to bring some testimonies to read of the impact. It is saving lives, not just for eternity, but saving lives now and impacting families and generations to come. And I just want to thank you. I love you. Don't forget to hit the little bell if you're watching on YouTube. So you subscribe. That way, every time we come on, you'll know that we're here. And um, you can come and worship with us and praise God. Love you. God bless you. If we can do anything for you.